Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magna Nordal, I'm a captain and instructor on ATR aircraft. This video is the first in a series of videos about the primary flight display, PFD, in ATR aircraft wing glass cockpit. It is about the procedures from power up until you are ready for takeoff. The aircraft is an ATR 72600 with standard 3.1 software. The PFD is in front of each pilot, next to the multifunction display MFD. To interact with the PFD, we have the index control panel ICP on the outer side of each PFD, and on the glare shield is a flight guidance control panel FGCP. Let us take a closer look at them. This is the PFD on the captain's side when the aircraft is powered up. The PFD is divided into the following areas. On the top is the Flight Mode Annunciator, FMA. The panel informs the pilots about every change in the flight director modes, the status of the autopilot and more. Every change is announced by the pilot flying. If a pilot is asking, what is it doing now? The most probable cause is that the pilot has not checked the FMA. The green FD label means the flight director, FD, is ready. The airspeed indicator shows speeds over 30 knots. The number on top of the indicator is the target speed. When the aircraft is powered up, the default value is 100. The attitude display indicator, ADI, is the most important instrument. It shows aircraft pitch and roll. The little black and yellow box represents the fuselage of the aircraft and those L-shaped figures are the wings. The vertical scale is the pitch angle in degrees. When parked on the ground, the aircraft has an attitude of one degree nose down. There are markers for 10, 20, 30 and 45 degrees bank. The two green lines indicate maximum allowed bank angle as determined by the flight director. At low speeds and when flying below 1100 feet after takeoff, maximum bank angle is 15 degrees as shown here. This is called low bank. Above 1100 feet and at uh, sufficient speed, the limit is 27 degrees. And this is high bank. When descending below 1000 feet, it changes back to low bank. This is the slip indicator. The lower part moves left and right when you're skidding. This is the radio altimeter. It is negative when the aircraft is on the ground. It will show zero at touchdown during landing. This is the altimeter. The number on top of the indicator is the target altitude. When the aircraft is powered up, the default value is zero feet. At power up, the pressure reference window shows the setting when the aircraft is shut down. The vertical speed indicator has a green needle. Current vertical speed is shown above unless the aircraft is maintaining altitude. Below are the annunciators for the transponder and TCAS. The lower part of the screen is the navigation area. There are two modes. One, the horizontal situation indicator, HSI. It is displayed in an associated multifunction display. It is showing the navigation display, called ND. When the MFD is showing other modes, like the system pages or the performance page, the navigation area switches to the second mode, called a mini ND. It is a copy of the large navigation display on the MFD, plus the HSI indicator. This is the index control panel, ICP. On the top are controls for the speed target. When the number is cyan color, the target speed and associated speedberg is set by the pilot by rotating this knob. Cyan color means manual mode. After starting the engines, we push the cell button and activate the auto mode and the target speed and bug change to magenta. The target speed is then calculated by the flight management system, FMS. The bio set button is used to set the biometric reference pressure for the altimeter. By pressing the button, we get standard reference, 101.25. The DH-MDA selector is used to set minima for instrument approach. DH is used for ILS CAT 2 when we use radio altimeter as reference. MDA is used for all other approaches when we use the barometric altimeter as reference.
The Flight Guidance Control Panel, FGCP, is used to interact with the flight director and autopilot. The coupling button, marked CPL, is used to toggle between a left and right navigation source and air data computer. As a default, the coupling is on the left side. When the coupling is set to the left, the flight director will follow the navigation source set with the now source selector here. And now it's set to FMS number one. When the coupling is on the right side, the flight director will follow the navigation signal selected here. The autopilot and your damper are engaged and disengaged by pressing those buttons. And their status is shown here. Those buttons are used to arm and activate lateral modes. Their status is shown here. Those buttons are used to activate vertical modes. And the status is shown here. This rotating knob is used to set the heading bug. When the knob is pushed, the heading bug is set to the current heading. The Alt cell knob is used to set the target altitude. The FD buttons will hide and display the flight director bars on their respective side. The standby button is used to remove all flight director modes. Ok, this is what the PFD looks like after power up. The navigation source is either FMS or VOR ILS. And the QNR setting is the value left when the aircraft was powered off. We will depart from Male Airport in the Maldives and fly at his Salon Alpha departure from runway 36. The runway in use is already confirmed. I will set the course I will use if I have to return to the airport after departure. In this case, it is ILS to runway 36. So I select VR ILS. At power up, the default value for the course is 360 degrees. The course for ILS approach on the 36 is 003, which is set with the course knob. The first officer will do the same on his or her side. The default value for the heading bug is the current heading. I set the heading bug to run heading 003. And for departure, the initial altitude will be 7000 feet. The MCDU is used to communicate with the FMS. Before entering the flight plan into the FMS, we must insert an estimated weight of the aircraft. The correct value is entered later when the load sheet is received. As a default, I select the zero fuel weight, 18 tons. And we know the fuel value, it's 2.7 tons for this flight. The target speed will not change to minimum speed with flap zero for that cross weight. The reserve fuel is sufficient to bring us back to Mala, plus alternate, plus reserves, as we cannot refuel at the destination. I set the now source back to FMS number 1. Fast forward and the flight plan is ready. Since the MFD is not showing the navigation display, we can see the first part of the flight plan in the mini navigation display. We will depart towards north, turn right and proceed to the south. We receive the load sheet and enter the correct zero fuel weight, 20,124 kilos. That gives a new gross weight and the target speed is updated accordingly. We also set up the center of gravity for takeoff and get the pitch trim to be used. We open the performance page on the MFD and check the numbers are correct. Then we press the confirm takeoff data label. When the takeoff data are confirmed, V1 is displayed. When ND is selected to MFD, the navigation area changes back to HSI. Nothing more happens until we have started the engines and selected flap 15. The first officer sets speed target to auto. The target speed becomes magenta, indicated automatic function, and it shows V2 plus 5. Before taxi, the first officer selects Heading, Now, indicated airspeed, and V Now. This activates Heading Select Low Bank and IS modes and arms L Now and V Now IS modes. L Now means lateral navigation and we follow the flight plan in the FMS. V Now means vertical navigation. V Now IS means the aircraft will respect altitude constraints 
where you must cross a waypoint at or below a given altitude. If the aircraft reaches this altitude before it passes the waypoint, it will level off activated VNAV ALT mode. When passing the waypoint, the aircraft will continue climbing. However, there are no such waypoints in the Maldives. But anyway, it is standard procedure to select Vina before departure. And that is all for this time. In the next video, we will take off and climb to the cruise level. And we will have a look at the icing procedures. Until then, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and happy landing!